stay fly, stay fly. Probably the worst experience that I had as a parent uh, because what ends up happening is um, you feel helpless. There's absolutely nothing you can do. Like, there's nothing you could do. You can't, like, nothing. Like, you can't, you wish you could transfer the pain. You wish you, wish you could, like, fast forward the chemo, um, on and on. But there's a lot of sleepless nights, a lot of nights that I cried. Even though the diagnosis was, was you know, very positive. Oh, doctors like, stay fly. You're listening to The Fly Guy Show. They do everything on the fly and in such a fly manner. Stay fly, stay fly, stay fly. I think all of that for calling you. The views expressed on The Fly Guy Podcast by the guests of The Fly Guy Podcast are only the views of the guests. Unless we say we agree. Unless explicitly stated. <laughs> hey, this is Ernie Thomas here on the Bold School Podcast. You're listening to Psycho Vaughner's Fly Guy Podcast. Support, like, subscribe, and share. He's saying some good things. Share it. Don't keep it to yourself. Two, one. It's your man, DJ Seiko Vaughner, with another great episode of the Fly Guys Podcast. I have my man, Dan Trez, on me. I have Crumb Snatcher in the house. Peace, brethren. How are you guys doing? Peace, peace. peace. I'm good. <laughs> That's good stuff. That's good stuff. Wait, let's jump right into the topic. Back in the day, I used to have a show called Daddy Man. It was Daddy Man Radio. Uh, let me show you exactly what it used to look like. It was on YouTube. And on Daddy Man Radio, we had about uh, 10 episodes, 12 episodes, this is to be exact. And we asked three questions. Describe three times in your fatherhood experience that were challenging and three times in your fatherhood experience that were joyous. And so we're going to kind of slow it down and bring it down to two. So, you know, I'd like to know about two times in your fatherhood experience that were challenging and two times in your fatherhood experience that were joyous. And we'll start with Dan Trez, then we'll go to Crumb Snatcher. And I want to say that today is a special day for me, June 9th. 19 years ago is the day I became a father. So this is my personal Father's Day. Uh, I want to take all the joy I can. I will even share it with my wife. <laughs> it was a shared experience. Share it with my son. It was a shared experience. But uh, yeah, 19 years ago today. And then interestingly enough, uh, 10 years ago, not necessarily on this day, but in this time period, is when my father became an ancestor. So he's been an ancestor for me almost 10 years now. So it's a really uh, really interesting time. So, yo, Dan Trez, man. Can I I say something real quick? I remember when me, you, Rhonda, and Yatunde went to the Miller Family March. Right. And uh, Akeem was He was in, he was in a, a carriage He was in a little He was pushing around <laughs> In a carriage I remember that And Yatunde was just Finding out when she was pregnant Right Today so Yeah I remember that Vividly I remember that Like it was yesterday That was like in 2000 Wow So yeah, yeah. So yep. yeah So um So you want me to start With the bad or the good Wh- Whichever you decide To start with man Um I'm gonna continue With the positive energy So um Just recently A couple About two weeks A week ago my daughter graduated from high school. Uh, I only have one girl, so um, and I have three boys, so um, she's she's my only girl. So it was just great to see. Um, she won, you know, she graduated with honors of distinction, um, and she got a free a full ride to um, to a Skidmore College up in New York. So it's just super. That's like the, one of the proudest moments of my life to see her do that. Um, and just she's a woman. She's a woman. So I think any parent want to see that. Um, the other, the, the other time was when my oldest graduated from high school, um, and that was that was back in 2012 um, out in Virginia Beach, and we all went there. And the reason why I was is because my family is spread around the country, my siblings and my mom, so it was very rare that we're all under the same roof together, and that was one week when we were all under the same roof together. Um, so it was just good to see, you know, just being around my entire family, my moms and my siblings, and then my wife and my kids, it was just a really dope moment, so... Those are the those are the two best right as of right now. I know there's gonna be some more, but those right. are the two best. So Right. Yo, Crumb, what are your two best fatherhood experiences? Oh, uh, 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 okay. Well, the reason that's hard is because there's been so many positive experiences. And um, for me as a father, I've taken a lot from my father. So um I'd have to say, in terms of a fatherhood experience, it wasn't me as the father, but my father. Um, 
you know, he's transitioned as well. Uh, rest in power. Okay. Um, so one time he was teaching me to play chess. And, you know, my father wasn't a chess guru, but he did something that humbled me and changed my life forever. So he took me to another man who, you know, my father took me as far as he could. And then at that point, he took me to another man and that man taught me how to play chess as well. And, you know, my father was right there beside me. And what he was telling me while the other man was teaching me is that he is not my only father. He said, you know, I may be your only blood father, but throughout your life, you will have many father figures. And I think that is what has changed my life. And it's, and it's made me look at the idea of being a father, you know, um, in some regards, keeping it humble, just put it out there. You know, you've been a, fa a father figure to me. And had my had not my father set me up for that, I wouldn't have looked at other men in the way he taught me to look at them. And that's the same thing I, I tell my son, you know, I pray that I'm not the only positive male figure in your life that gives you something. I hope that you can take something from every man who uh, uh, seeks to, to, uh, to empower, improve, or to put something into you. And for me, for my son, we've we've been better men because we were open not just to me being a father or my father being a father but taking that from every you know uh every every man in my life i see you know this one guy i was working with well dressed he said you know on time is late 15 minutes early is on time and now at that point in time i saw my father in that man anytime a man comes into my life and to give me something positive, my father is there. And I'll never forget that experience the day he taught me how to play chess. And in terms of that patri uh, um, paternal energy, every single time I'm, I interact with men or my son, it's just always there to where I'm looking and I always have it in the front of my mind. I'm gonna take something, especially from the older men in my life, or even in my son's life, we always take something positive from all the brothers, you know. So it's not just my father or me being a father. It's what all melanated, no, no, it doesn't have to be melanated. All mature men I come across, even, you know, you and Dan, uh, you know, and uh, even, you know, because I, I thought your cousin was going to be up here. But, you know, anybody in my life, I've always, male, of course, I've always taken that from and that's kind of really set me on the path to be humble in being a father and to be humble to allow other men to be that father figure in my life and in my son's life as well. Cool. What's the uh, second uh, joyous fatherhood experience you've had? Well, yeah, I, I can't help but to dote on my babies. I can't help but to dote on my babies. <laughs> so, uh, my uh, oldest son... He, uh, I was pushing him one day. I was pushing that boy, and he broke down and started crying. And I said, "Okay, I've pushed him too far. I'm gonna let up." So I said, "You know what? Whatever it is, I was trying to convey to him to pull out of him. He, you're not gonna get it right now. Just whatever. Just we'll come back to it." So my son says to me, "He's like, nah." You know, I'm crying right now. I'm hurt right now, but I'm going to push through this thing and we're going to get this thing one way or another. And on that day, I was like, you know, keep, the boy was eight. Mm. Jeez Louise, that's the man in him. Wow. That's a man in, at eight years old crying. Brother, if, when I was eight and my father pushed me to the limit and I broke, look, listen, let me go. I need to take a breather. My son was like, nah, I'm good. I'm pushing through. And I said to myself, that's a man's man. But that boy made me proud that day. Wow. Man, it, it is good watching our children accomplish things and push through some things. You know, I'm going to jump in and give my two joyous moments. And interestingly enough, one of my joyous moments kind of mimics yours, Crump. And... 
I used to go to a barber. Now, I, I know I've said this story. I know you've heard it probably. Dan, you've probably heard the story as well. But my father used to take me to this barber, and I used to like going because they had comic books. So, you know, my parents didn't buy me comic books till later on, you know, when I was able to buy them myself. So I would go there and I would read all these comic books, right? And I guess my time in high school, I started kind of pulling away from my parents. You know how you are in high school? But yep. I would go to the barber shop and it was wild that everything I was uh you good, you good. <laughs> you good. All right. Everything I was I was struggling with. The barber and all the guys in the barber shop would talk to me about, and it was. I mean, I used to go there and get some great information, great knowledge, and it's really similar to what you were saying. Because later on, when I was in college and I came back home to get a haircut, and my parents had actually moved out the area, you know, the barber said, "Man, I miss seeing you, and I miss hearing from your father." And I was like, "What?" He said, "Yeah, your father would call and tell us everything that you were dealing with, and that's how we knew to chop it up with you." Mm. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, my father didn't specifically say you're going to find other fathers in your life. You need to follow them. He surrounded me with a community of fathers and did it, you know, in a way when I wasn't trying to hear nothing he had to say. I heard everything he needed to say because it went through other men, you know. So, uh, you know, I want to give salutes to my father for that. I, I say. And once I realized that, that was one of the most joyous times in my fatherhood experience. Um, and then the second, the second time was really recent. You know, my son is a student studying physics. And so he was on campus. We got there early and I was able to set up an internship with the, with the director of students, the dean of students. So he worked for two months under the dean of students in the summertime before he started his freshman year. Oh, wow. During that time, he was able to meet with all the faculty members, not all, but many of them, you know, and he didn't like some things on his schedule. He said, Dad, I had this class already. I had this class already. I did well in high school. Why are they forcing me to take this class again? I'm like, son, that's the way they do things in college, but you're on campus every day. You handle it. He went to the professor's he went to the deans of the department. He negotiated. He actually had them come up with a contract. Well, they, they gave him a contract. And the contract said, if you fail this class, you can't fault us. And we're going to put you in a higher class. So the class that he wanted to skip, he was able to pull and get full credit for his high school experience. He signed a contract with them. They were so impressed that when a professor received a grant, they hired him his freshman year. Oh, wow. So now, not only is he a student, but he's an employee of the university. They okay. got some of the reports that he did. They sent it off to the grantor. The grantor was so impressed that they published it. So as a freshman, he has two published reports. Those wow. published reports were reviewed. And then they, the grantor brought him to Colorado. He spoke at a professional physics conference as wow. a freshman in high school. Wow. I mean, a freshman in college. And then they were so impressed. Here's the last part of it. Uh, about a week ago, we put him on a plane. He's in Colorado now doing research for the University of Colorado at Denver. He wow. just received his first check. They're paying him $5,000 for being there for the summer. Um, wow. Man, so his experience to be able to first negotiate his way and to say, I'm not going to accept what you're giving me when I know I can get better, led him to all of these beautiful things. I mean, that's. That's dope, man. That's yeah. dope. <laughs> that's dope. Yeah. I don't expect yeah. any less, though. Yeah. Uh, all right, I'll take that. I'll take that. <laughs> It's my father's day. I'll take that. Uh, but Dan Trez, what are some of the most challenging experiences? And we don't have to limit it to two. Um, I just want to say fatherhood experiences. I, I just want to say real quick, um, 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 Seku, that I'm thankful for you and your family. Um, and what I mean by that, I mean you and Rhonda's family. Because when we lived in Virginia, y'all was just super duper supportive of us. I mean, just across the board. I could, I could write a book on how wonderful your family was with us, um, especially your dad. Um, Baba Varna was I feel really bad because 
when me and Yutunde eloped, he came to me and he said he was disappointed because he wanted to marry us. And I had, we had planned on having him do our 10th anniversary, but unfortunately he transitioned. So um, I'm forever, forever grateful. Um, he's been nothing but wonderful t- to me and my family. Um, and I don't think like we would be as successful as we are if it wasn't for your, you and your family. So I just want to give you all a shout out because y'all was just super duper supportive back. I just, man, like we were a young family. We didn't have any blood family in the area and y'all was just always there for us on every conceivable level. So I, I know I always say that, but I just want to continue to say that, that I'm eternally grateful for that. And that's like a debt I can never pay. Um, now going into the worst, I think for me, probably the worst experience, um, is when, when Xavier had cancer. That was probably probably the worst experience that I had as a parent uh, because what ends up happening is um, you feel helpless. There's absolutely nothing you can do. Like, there's nothing you could do. You can't, like, nothing. Like, you can't. You wish you could transfer the pain. You wish you, wish you could, like, fast forward the chemo, um, on and on. But there's a lot of sleepless nights, a lot of nights that I cried. Even though the diagnosis was was you know very positive the doctors were like you know he's gonna be good it's better when it's better when it happens when he's young um but it was it was a tough time one that i try not to to recollect because it's just a lot it was a lot that's probably one of the the worst um that i don't wish i don't even wish i'm my worst enemy you know Mm. wow uh crumb what's been one of the most challenging times you've had sir Man, dealing with these with, with, with these Tamil who I went to my now keep in mind I don't rely on nobody to teach my baby you know anybody who 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 passes the buck <laughs> and you know uh, allows somebody else to teach your children has made a critical mistake number one so you know my kid's mom she's not into that she's a really pacifist person if someone else can do for her what she can do for herself, she will allow them to do it. And I'm just not that type of person. So I take my child, my, my child's education into my hands. I don't care what they say at that school. I'm going to tell my baby first. Listen, yeah, the, when they ask you to Christopher Columbus, you put what they tell you to put to get the A, but just know it's a bunch of garbage. That's conditioning and indoctrination. So my baby is straight A student, but he know left from right, up from down. You know, he goes to school and takes it with a grain of salt which I tell them to. So, straight A student, go to the class. This is, um, what are we doing? Uh, parent-teacher conference. Straight A student now. Okay. So I go to the school. Now, keep in mind, I got a tie on. I got my suspenders on. I'm playing a game for them. So, the teacher asked me. She says, what's the relationship between you and your son? Whoa, Kimosabi. Nah, uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. I came here to talk to you about my baby's academic growth and development. This ain't no Ayana fix my life and I tell you what you know. You know what? You you know, I mean, listen, lady. I'm not going to tolerate that stereotypical uh, uh, cliche, you know, all black men, whatever, you know. So um, for for me, uh, just just dealing with these people and their, you know, racist, stereotypic, cliche, over-the-top ideology of what they expect from us, you know? So, um, just dealing with these schools, man, it's like, yo, for real, for real, I tell you, man, you guys are getting a free check because, you know, (laughs) I remember, well, but nonetheless, just dealing with the school, you know, when I was a child, if I got an F, the teacher said, you earned that F. That was you. My son was a straight-A student. The teacher's sitting here taking pictures with him, trying to, you know, uh, 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 bank off him. Oh, well, you know, I'm going to take part of that success. No. No, family. Ooh. The challenge is where the, pre- the, the, the you know, uh, 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 the parent gets the credit for being the first teacher, giving the baby right knowledge, helping him or her uh, um, transverse through this uh, through this world that is going to smile in your face, but the reality is they see you in a, ter- in, in, in a totally different way from what their face portrays. And uh, going in there and dealing with these folks. You know, it's, 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 it's been a ridiculous challenge. Wow. So my baby get an F. Well, back in the day, they put me in uh, SLD classes, slow learning disability. I remember they used to tell me, Crumb, you earned that F. I didn't give it to you. 
Now my son is straight A student. Look at me. He's a straight A student because I'm a good teacher. I told my son, I said, listen, don't be taking them pictures with them teachers. That teacher asked you for a picture, respectfully decline. Because that's interesting. That that's that, uh, I think all of us all of us have had some challenge with the school system. I know I have. My son, uh, my son has always been like the uh, United Nations. You know, he's always had friends from everywhere. All right. And so he had this little clique that he hung with. All of them were, you know, great students. All of them were gifted students. Uh, one was Asian. One was Mexican. All right. Uh, he was the, you know, the melanated American, the black American. Uh, I think one was white. There was another one, and I can't remember what his background may have been. But they came up with these little nicknames that they messed around, and they just kind of, you know, being friends. The Motley Crew. Yeah, yeah. So my son was uh, Sir Afro, right? And his friend was Sir Taco, the, the Mexican cat. And then the Asian cat was something, you know. So they had these little nicknames, and they, they just played around with each other, and they were cool. Well, one of them wrote down on a, a piece of paper all the names, and then somehow that name, that piece of paper, got into the hands of an administrator, and they suspended them all. Wow! And wow. so we had to go up there and fight, and you know, luckily we fought, and you know, the the principal, and I still think she made a poor decision, but she supported her AP because the AP, the assistant principal. Suspended them all. Gave was giving them all two days for being racially insensitive or something like that, bullying, right? And the principal just kind of helped them reduce it. So my son was in detention for two. He was in a detention for one day. He was home for one day. He was in detention the next day, and then it was kind of taken off of his record. I think. I think that's what we ended up fighting for. But it it just blew my mind. That if I didn't fight for that, he would have been home for two days. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I, I know that we've all had some challenges with the school system, right? And you know, it's it's a sad reality. Um, and I I get that, and I know I kind of you know went a little bit left with that. Um, I was just upset, you know, speaking about racially insensitive. How are you going to question me? about something that has nothing to do with my child's education. And then, you know, it's it's overt, well, you know, I guess they're trying to be covert, but it's overtly, you know, racist almost, you know, or at least uh, prejudice. You know, yeah. you're asked, do you ask your white parents that, you know, I'm sorry, your white fathers, you know, and this is for fathers everywhere. I can almost guarantee, even if the woman would have asked a white father that, they would have not asked the mother that. What is your relationship in the child's life? It was it is it is automatically assumed that 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 the mother's engaged. But when it comes to the father, there's always going to be a degree of suspicion. You know what? That's interesting because for years, and I've noticed within the last two years, it's kind of tapered off. But, you know, when I first had my son, I used to take my son everywhere. Yep. You know, dad, yep. I used to yep. stay with the B-boy battles. Yep. I used yep. to have the DJ parties. Yep. I took him some places I probably shouldn't have taken him. But I, I had my son all the time with me. Yep. All right. And so one day I had a picture of my son. And, you know, I met this young lady. And I don't know how we got to the conversation, but... Um, they're like, you got, you got kids? I'm like, yeah, here's, here's a picture of my kid. And one of them said, well, are you a daddy or a sperm dog? And then I started noticing on Father's Day, people would say, shout out to the real fathers out there. You know, they were putting up clarifications. You got to meet these criteria before I can shout you out on Father's Day. Now, Mind you, I was working in Portsmouth, Virginia at the time, which had the highest kinship rate, which meant that the children lived with kin. They lived with families other than the maternal, you know, father or, you know, the, the mother or the father. Mm-hmm. So they had the highest rate at that time with people living with grandparents, aunts, uncles, cousins, brothers and sisters. You know, there was kinship, that, that type of, they had the highest kinship rate. And so I'm working there, and these chicks are asking me, you know, were you a father or a sperm donor? And, you know, I, I, I was kind of upset. 
you know, and I was like, well, are you a, you know, are you a, a good mother or <laughs> have your children been taken from you? You know, I was kind of taken aback, man. You know, are you a good mother or an unfit mother? You know, and it, so, so, oh man, so the assumptions, and I realized that unfortunately there's too much truth in the assumption. That's what I was gonna say. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. That you know, being there's an too educator, much truth in the no, but being being an educator, being a parent. Being, no, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Being a being a parent and and say you know, let let a brother know. Um, when you go to the PTA meetings, it's predominantly what mothers, mothers, right? You go. Um, I can count on my fingers. You know, I've been educated for several years now. I count on my fingers how many of their fathers I know. You know that I make a point to know. You know, um, and it's it, it's it's not something that's coming out of the sky. You know, what I mean, I, again, don't get me wrong. I don't get offended when they say that to me when they ask questions, but it comes from a place where you know, unfortunately, that's what they see. That's what they know. Um, I have many students that don't even know who their father is. You know what I'm saying? Like, I have many students that'll tell me, you know, I ain't seen my father in X amount of years. You know, so like, uh, being a mentor as well. Like, I mentor, I mentor many, many young, many, many kids, and I ain't never seen their father, man. I couldn't even tell you who, who he looked like. You know, so it's not. It doesn't come from a place of, you know, if they're not pulling it out of the air. You know what I mean? So. That's all I got to say. I'm not saying it's right. I don't think we should assume, you know what I'm saying? But it doesn't come from, it's not something that's made up. I, I agree that there, you know, as I just stated, you know, it's not, uh, it, it's definitely not something that's just made up. But it also comes from a, a place of hurt. Of course, of course. It comes from a place of hurt. Of course. And uh, are you the same type of guy that's hurt me and my family because you weren't, yeah. There as a father, like my father wasn't there. True indeed. Um, you know, it's, I, I realize it's coming from a place of hurt, and they were passing on that hurt. Um, yeah, sure. Okay, so and, and Crumb, you're like, nah, dude. Oh no! no. <laughs> we are dancing around, passing the buck, and we sitting here. We're gonna put it on everything but what it is. We are dealing with institutional racism. We're dealing with a society that has made it clear that we do not want you around here. Our men know damn well where they are wanted and where they are not wanted. We know even when 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 our people go to apply for these uh, um, um, any of these government programs, we can name on five hands all the programs surrounding our women. Name me five programs surrounded around our fathers. Our fathers have gotten the message loud and clear. In terms of the institution, you are a far second. The system isn't set up for you. Go to that school and find me and and tell me, say, okay, I can't find any black fathers fine you can't find the black fathers now tell me when a, when a black father goes to the school who's he gonna talk to a white teacher these white teachers have made it painfully obvious and yet we may have a small number of male teachers but you are obviously and painfully in the in the majority we have an an overwhelming qualified number of black men who are able to teach but we have been systematically kept out of the system and not only do we know that we know where we are not wanted at and as a father not only did that one teacher give me disrespect when i came down to that school and demanded that my baby put, be put in the gifted class the program cuz my baby was uh uh um uh, running circles running circles around do you know that the uh the principal got the coach and i i was taken aback because keep in mind when i go to the school it's it, it, you know i'm not even wearing a regular tie i'm wearing bow ties suspenders jackets slacks these uh, uh, uh hard bottoms the, the, the principal got 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 the coach you know and and the principal is standing behind you know inside his office the coach is you know um uh 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 uh, uh standing like, like like he has a cape on him in the threshold <laughs> of, uh, and the principal's kind of you know behind the coach saying this and saying that family 
this is the thing in business they tell you if one person complains there was 10 people that were silent this is the elephant in the room of how all institutions, not just the educational realm, but all institutions, we're going with education, we're going with public housing, we're going with um, uh, 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 programs that 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 are uh, supposed to be for the for the uh, the uh, the uh, people at large, from the top to the bottom, from left to right. Our men, the melanated men, have 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 gotten the picture. Loud and clear, and we're going to see the same thing when, 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 when you know we have these Salem witch hunts where you know we're going to go after Bill Cosby. I'm not saying he's innocent. We're going to go after R. Kelly. I'm not saying he's innocent, but we're going to see where Harvey Weinstein gets a gets gets a pass to operate with impunity. And if and and, and, and if we want to put this on 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 the men and 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 say this is something emotional versus that we know. Uh, what these people have given us It's just like the doll test Nobody told those little kids Hey you're black, you're ugly, whatever A, a picture is worth a thousand words The truth of the elephant being in the room Is an unspoken truth But it's truth nonetheless You know what, uh, we have seven minutes left And I think that's a great number For us to hit to the solutions uh, So obviously there's a problem here yeah. All right, and You're pointing towards the correctly uh, Noted Institutional issues that we face. Yeah. Well, I mean, I and mean, white then, supremacy. I, I, I agree with you. White supremacy is an issue, but right. I'm only asking. I'm only asking the fathers of my students to do their job. All right, you so I mean? that's what, that's all I'm what, asking. You know, what do they need to do? No, yeah, and, and, and I think hold on, hold on, hold on. Like, Danny, what do they need to do? Man to build a house and don't give him a hammer. If he has no hammer, but the expectation is to build, it is for him to build a house. Then at that point. What are we really dealing with? We're dealing with a, 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 a people who have set our men up for failure. For a man to be a productive citizen or, 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 or to uh, uh, contribute and to do what he needs to do, he has to have the resources. Not only does he have to have the resources, he has to have the support of the community. Just like you were saying, when we, we see on Father's Day, the men don't have the support of the community. We don't have the support of the women. You know, generally speaking, I, I, I get the support the women, man. Sisters, sisters have held me up, man. I mean, I, my community. The reason why I have my family is because of my community. That's, that's, you know that's an individual. The reason why I got access and resources. We're talking, about, you know, all I'm asking, all I can always find an exception. But all what is I'm the general? What is the general consensus? Yeah, that's yeah, all yeah. I'm asking. Go ahead, go ahead. What What are you asking? Because I think you're asking some solution focused thing. Yeah. Definitely. The solution is we have to get behind our men, and we can always find an exception. Martin, okay. uh, uh, Malcolm X signed. M- Malcolm X said, "When I speak to white people and put them down, they're going to find a Negro to come to to, to come against me." Yeah, you, you can find an exception. No worries about that. But when we're dealing with the collective. Your your exceptions hold no weight. We're dealing with the sun versus a candle. In the collective, we need to have a united effort, not a onesie twosie. Where oh well, Michael Jordan got through, Oprah got through. What about the majority? We have no support for our men in terms of the majority, or none. Well, are no, men. no, Crumb. I think I think you're missing my point. The system is is against us. White supremacist, capitalist, patriarchy is is the beast that we fight. I'm not saying it isn't. Right, but all I'm asking is brothers to step up to the plate. What's all the right, solution? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Trump. Yeah, I didn't yeah, miss the point. My point. Got you Trump, missed, you missed my point. I said, all I'm asking point. is, all I'm asking is, when we have PTA meetings. You I ask me to the the up, right? No all I'm asking is, if you build a house, I have no wood. If you hold on, one at a time. You can't ask me for something that I don't have. You yes, can't you do have it. Come you just explained it no earlier. Problem. Yes, you How do you have ask it. Me for something you about what you have, have it. At talk. that point, now, now, now you're being funny. Now you're being. I'm not trying to be funny. I'm not. No, 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 no. no. You, you may not be trying to be funny, but we got to deal with the reality. You can't ask a broke man for a dollar. You can't. Okay, okay, hold on, hold on. I'm asking a broke man for a dollar. All right, so asking no father for a dollar. All right, all right. Figuratively speaking. Okay, so <laughs> we're going to have to wrap up. This is going to have to be another one. <laughs> oh, man, I'm loving this. I'm loving this. Uh, so we're go- on our next conversation, how do we fight the institutions that are against us? And then how do we step up? I'm, I'm cool for that. I like that. 
I like that. I like that. Uh, going out. Last words, Crumb. Last words. Um, we we as men have uh, have the world uh, 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 the odds stacked against us, but there will always be hope. As long as there are brothers like us three here, then there is is is, is a protocol for, for for the other men to follow. Wow, you said that quickly. All right, <laughs> dead <Dan>, trends <Trez> only. <laughs> oh, just um, I, I don't know if we're gonna meet up again next Sunday or not. But if we don't, or we do, you know, Happy Father's Day uh, to everyone out there. Um, even those, and when I say Happy Father's Day, I also include the uncles and the grandfathers and the mentors and the coaches and the educators that are out there helping raise our babies. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, you know what? We have two minutes left. I think we're going to go ahead and end now. Uh, Yo, happy Father's Day in advance. And we will need to get back together because this is important that we both come up with solutions for the institutions that are against us and for ways that we can step up. And I, I really like the way that Dan said, I just need you to show up. So have you seen any examples of men just showing up, fathers showing up? You asking me? Yes. Yeah, every day. Every day. Every day I do. I see, you know, whether um whether I see um for example, we just had a two tornadoes here in Dayton. You know, um your, your crew was out there, the Qs are out there. Um shout out to the Qs. They were out there um raising money, cleaning up neighborhoods and stuff like that. Um so I can go on and on. Um, you know, what I like too was a lot of businesses, black owned businesses, they they closed for the, those couple of days and they um instead of, you know, being open for business, they accepted donations and supplies, and they distributed out throughout their community. Um, mm-hmm. Young Black Professionals, another organization here, um, um, they same thing. They closed whatever they were doing, and they got together and they got you know they collected supplies and money, and they went and um, you know delivered those supplies personally to people that needed it. So they, hashtag Dayton Strong. So yes, sir. All right. Hashtag Dayton Strong. I'm here in Virginia Beach. Hashtag VB Strong. You know, we just had the... Uh, oh, that's right. That's right. We yeah. just had the shooting. Mm-hmm. So I, and with that, I'm going to say we need to have a few uh, few more resources. So Dan Trez, one last... Because I know you're a resource. One book that deals with fatherhood. We have 30 seconds. One book. Um, The World of Change by Dr. Bell Hooks. You, okay, you're back on that. <laughs> <laughs> the Will to Change by Dr. Bell Hooks. Yep. Okay. All right. Um, with that, I'll say stay fly. 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 The views expressed on the Fly Guy podcast by the guests of the Fly Guy podcast are only the views of the guests, unless we say we agree, unless explicitly stated. <laughs> Stay fly, stay fly, stay fly, stay fly, stay fly, stay fly. Stay conscious, stay fly. Good, 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 good. So, uh, why don't we start off with uh, your movement? So, Dan Trez, tell us a little bit about your movement. What are you involved in right now, brother? Uh, we're my Killer Tape podcast, about to upload uh, episode 70. Um, and also, we have three days left to the uh, Mortal Man Kickstarter. Um, now, we already met our goals. Uh, we still are taking pre orders for the book. Um, and the book is about um, how men deal with um, you know emotions, death, family, mortality. So um, we'll definitely, uh, if you want the link, I can send you that link. So we have yeah, we'll put that in the show notes. Good stuff. Definitely. All right, Crumb Snatcher, man. Uh, what's your movement? Well, um, I actually have a podcast going on right now called Snatched. Um, it's everywhere where you can find podcasts. I'm on Stitcher, iTunes, iHeartRadio, um, amongst a other plethora of places. Just search uh, Snatched Podcast. And of course, you know, you can find me on uh, YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook under Crum TV. All right. Good. I'm glad you said that because the Snatch Podcast is a brand new podcast. It looks like you just hit 100 listens. Uh, so that's big, man. That's big. It's actually on the edgy 
podcast platform. So I want to thank you for being part of the Edgy Podcast. <laughs> and I want to shout out my girl Star from Conveying Culture. We just started her podcast. Hers just launched a few days ago. And so you can find Conveying Culture anywhere you find great podcasts. <laughs>